Hello, and welcome to today's Thursday a live coaching call and community conversation. Today, we're going to be talking about how and why women are so successful with intermittent fasting and why intermittent fasting and a lifestyle of intermittent fasting should not be considered a fad diet or classified with a lot of the fad diets that I know a lot of us have used before. So welcome. Please make sure you are using the comment section today. Say hello. Let us know if you're currently in class or maybe you're planning to take class in September or if you're one of our graduates. We always love hearing from you. And it's, this is also the time to ask your questions. I will answer them live um, as soon as I'm done uh, with my little thoughts for today. And if you're joining us on the rebroadcast, I always say use the comment section as well. I do go through um, the comments from the rebroadcast and answer and comment on those as well. So just a minute or two here, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Diane Parham. I am the creator of the online course and community, The Intermittent Fasting for Today's Aging Woman, as well as our Midlife Mindset Shift course and community. Here we talk about all things for us as aging women and how we can create an amazing lifestyle for ourselves using the practice of intermittent fasting. Um, if you're joining us on YouTube, you will need to hit that subscribe button in order to leave us a comment. So make sure you're subscribed. And if you're joining us on Facebook, I ask that you follow the page as well, because one of the biggest things uh, that I get in my uh, inbox is how do I know when you're going live? The best way to know when we're going live is to follow us on Facebook. Make sure you're set up for notifications, subscribe on YouTube, hit the little bell notification. That way you'll know we're here and you can join the conversation with us. Okay. So let's get started today. What I'm going to do, and you guys know because I always come from the standpoint of mindset, right? And why it is so many of us women are feeling so frustrated in this season of life with our body and, and why we don't understand why it's working the way it's working. And we don't really take the time to think about what happened to us, right? And we often go to that what's wrong with us. And so I want to talk today a little bit about fad diets and how it is so many of us are suffering from the same exact things, regardless of where it is we live in the world, what it is, uh, you know, what kind of resources we had growing up. It is literally a seasonal thing that we're all suffering from. And how did this happen to us? And I, and I think a lot of it does really have to do with the fad diet industry and us thinking that that's the only way that we can control what's going on in our body. So let's start with uh, what a fad is. So we're going to define it. So hopefully you guys brought your notebooks today because I do ask that you take this time that we're together as being in class, just as if you were in class with us with the intermittent fasting course or the mindset shift course, treat these times together as being in class, get your notebooks out. Let's write out what the fad is definition is. So it's an intense and widely shared enthusiasm for something, especially one that is short-lived, so underline that, and without basis in the object's qualities, underline that, and interest followed for a time with exaggerated zeal. So do me a favor in the comment section, just type in fad. If this is something that caught your attention when it comes to you and your body, the exaggerated zeal, right? Shared enthusiasm that you had with other people. You wanted to be part of what they were doing, or you saw someone's results and you're like, I want to be like that person. And then also was it a short lived experience for you? Meaning you did a set of things for a short period of time, you achieved your goals and then you did something else. Right. And that is truly what a fad is. So now let's, let's define the second half of that, the diet part. So a diet, write this down as well, a special course of food to which one restricts oneself, underline that part, either to lose weight or for medical reasons. So fad diet, can you see what happened to us, right? So many of us, I know I would, I think I was on my first diet when I was in elementary school. We've grown up with this mindset of being, you know, all this ex, um, exaggerated zeal and excitement and hope that we're going to achieve the results we see someone else getting. We're going to be restrictive in, in how we go about our day. Um, it's going to be short lived and we've then have this dialogue in our own head of how we failed at things or the falling off the wagon mentality or the throwing in the towel because it's set into our mindset. It's ingrained in how we think about 
how we show up and how we treat food and diet and what we do to ourselves to create a change. So let's put those two words together and let's define really what a fad diet is. Plans sold as the best and fastest approach to losing weight. That right there, my friends, is what happened to us. We bought into the plan as that thing that we did that happened to be what everybody else was doing with their exaggerated zeal, right? And we bought into that that was the best approach for us to lose weight for our bodies. We never questioned what else we were going to be doing to our bodies in the process of buying into this thing that we were just sold. And that's why so many of us, when we start to go through these hormonal changes, we feel so stuck and we feel so frustrated and we feel like we're broken when all it is is that we now have this this desire to stop doing what we did before, right? And we want to start in creating a lifestyle. This is where if you approach intermittent fasting as a lifestyle change, you can avoid all the ups and downs. You can avoid all the disappointment. You can avoid the restrictiveness. You can avoid all of those things that we tend to get up caught up in our own mindset that really will limit us from achieving what it is that we say that we want here. And that's for all of us to wake up every day for the rest of our life, looking and feeling our best on any given day and doing that in our most authentic way. And when we start to lead with that, then we really do start to have the opportunity to think for ourselves. So we don't have to be sold something that's going to be drastic and unrealistic and for a short period of time. And then we have to put another little notch in our belt saying, oh, we failed again. This lifestyle, especially the way I like to present it and the way that I like to teach it and coach it inside the Intermittent Fasting for Today's Aging Woman course and even in the Mindset Shift course, is how do you feel? Like, how is it that when you make a decision, you feel? Do you feel authentic? Do you feel happy? Do you feel energized? Do you feel good in your own skin? And then if you say yes to all of those things, no one should tell you that that is a bad thing for you. The beautiful thing about intermittent fasting, the fasting that we do in a 24 hour period is that it is not restrictive. You are making a very conscious decision that today I'm going to fast for these amount of hours because these are the benefits I hope to reap from that. And then I'm going to also consciously choose to fuel my body with nutrition for this amount of time. And I'm going to pay attention so that the foods that I'm choosing to put into my body, I'm going to decide whether those things are working for me or not. And then you don't have to have any kind of restrictions. You're just going to make informed and conscious decisions. So the diet mindset can completely be changed in your own thought process because you're going to make decisions based on how it is you, the individual woman, decides she wants to look and feel. And then you get to do it in the way that allows you to show up in your life for your best self. There is no one that should tell you that you have to do one thing absolutely the way someone says, regardless of how you feel. I hear this a lot with women who are doing... Um, and, and, and I know my strength training people are going to let me hear about this, but who are training with people in a gym, personal trainers, especially if you're training with a man and you're a woman and the man tells you, you have to eat a certain way in order to build your muscle. And you come to me and say, Diane, I'm full up to here. Like I can't eat. I don't feel good. This, all this food I'm told to eat is not really allowing me to look and feel my best. What should I do? And my advice is always fire the trainer, right? Figure it out for yourself. You can tell what you need to do. You know, when you're looking and feeling your best, no one else is going to tell you that they're going to read off a chart and say, do this because 2000 people were surveyed and they said this was the best way to live. And that is not always going to be true for you. So we have to go back to what makes sense, right? And the thing about the fad diet uh, or the fad definition that really struck uh, my own mindset was without basis in the object's qualities. That means we don't question 
right? What we're being sold if emotionally we connect to someone else's results. That's called emotional marketing. The fitness industry and the diet industry and the supplement industry is really good at that. There's very specific times they run their infomercials. There's very specific words that they use. There's very specific pictures that they use. I talked about Monday that when I was in an infomercial for a fitness program, how they selected the, the photos that they wanted to show. And the backside of my body was not one of them because that not didn't represent what every woman is hope, hoping for, right? And what every woman is hoping for is not the reality for most women. And so we have to make sure that we're picking things for ourselves based on the, the mindset, the thoughts, the common sense, the am I going to be able to show up for myself? How long am I going to be able to manage this? Do I really feel happy? Am I really feeling my best? And then we can live these long-term lifestyles that we get to make the definitions for and then rinse and repeat them as needed. So be very careful when you are making these emotional decisions for yourself. Someone in a marketing job knows exactly when to get you, right? And you have to make sure that you're doing it from your most authentic and your most conscious place so you don't fall into a trap. This is why there are a lot of women here who get really frustrated because I say, I don't know, go try it out and come back and let us know. Because I don't know you. I cannot tell you what you're supposed to eat. I cannot tell you what you're supposed to break your fast with. I can't even tell you with 100% certainty that a 20, 20 hour fast is going to be your sweet spot. I can tell you for the majority of people that are here, it's your sweet spot. It can be the sweet spot, but I don't know you, right? So you have to go back and go and, and take some information and try it out and then come back and go, you know what? 18 is better. I think 18 works better for my life. And then I can share it with people or you could put it in the comment section and other women might go, you know, I'm going to try 18. Maybe 20 is too much. Maybe, maybe 22 is better for me. I don't know yet. So we have to go back to asking ourselves the question and then making sure we're staying away from those emotional decisions that seem fatty. If you get that gut sensation or you question a decision you're about to make about something you're going to do, does it feel restrictive? Does it feel like I'm being sold something that seems unrealistic? for me, you have to question that. And then know that when you practice something like intermittent fasting, you're just moving out of the way of your body for 20 hours, 18 hours, 16 hours, whatever you decide. You're just moving out of the way and saying, body, do your thing. This is where women are finding the best success with their weight loss and, and the longevity of that success in the fact that they're thinking about what it is they say that they want for themselves. We say this here a lot. If what you're saying for yourself and what you're doing are causing conflict, then that's not the thing for you. And it could be something that you're falling into some fad about, right? And so remember, fads are like carnivore diets, only meat, plant-based, only plants, a uh, whole 30, no sugar. Like that's not realistic for the average person for a long period of time. It's a short-term solution to a long-term problem. And we not need to start creating these long-term solutions for this long-term opportunity that we can live in our own skin and be happy with that. So I hope this helps you figure out that you can do this and not be restrictive. You can do this and not feel like you're on a diet. You can do this and reach the success that you're hoping for. You can do this based on what you say you want because what you do is going to be decided by you. No restrictive, no heavy plans, no telling you what is right or wrong. Your body's going to inform you on that because you're fasting correctly. And that's really the joy out of all of this that I know so many of you are reaching. I hope this helps. Be very weary of anybody who is an absolutist or telling you that you have to do this to get this result or warnings or all of those kind of things. Those are like the red flag words I always look for. Um, and make sure that you start looking for those as well. Make sure that whoever you are investing in or spending time with is allowing you the opportunity to make decisions for yourself. Okay, so let's see who's here today. Susan, July grad, no way this is a fad. It is the way I live now and for the rest of my life and the way of life for my husband too. Yeah, and that's the other thing, right? When you, the, the woman, I believe this is true, that when the woman in the home is changing things and, and showing and modeling that this is easy and it's fun and it's not restrictive and you're going to actually stick with it, the people around you will also jump in with you because you're modeling the benefits, right? 
Oftentimes we drag our family members through a lot of these fad diets with us and it's exhausting for them. And we have to make sure that we step back and we notice that we've done that and give them the time and the grace to see that this is something that is all that it's cracked up to be. And then before you know it, your family will jump in as well. And that's the best part for sure. August class. So thrilled to have jumped on. I love the course. Thank you, Diane. Chris, you're so welcome, my friend. I love having you in class with us. Um, class is fun, right? And this is the way life is supposed to be. We should be able to move freely about our life and not feel super restrictive or not be super, um, um, what it was the word I wanted to say, um, uh, consumed with thoughts about food and anxiety about food and fear of vacation. We talk about that a lot here too. Like it should be really fun and you should be able to just not even stress about food. Anita, so glad to be catching you live today. Anita, so good to have you with us. My friend, Valerie, July 22 grad, still going strong. So glad to catch you live. Yeah, Valerie, I'm super glad that you're still going strong. Um, and that's exactly why uh, the reason we talked about fad diets today, right? Like you're going strong because there's no short term um, plan that you're on. You get to make the decisions and ebb and flow your way through the rest of your life. I'm super excited for you. Pamela, August class, having a blast with the community, learning so much here. I would highly recommend Diane's class. You will not regret it. Pamela, thank you for saying that. I appreciate you so much. Yeah, it should be fun, right? We, we, should, we should not feel stressed out about doing good things for ourselves. And so I really do try to make it fun. And I try to make it very thought provoking for you too. Um, me, Miss Yo-Yo's clothes rack. Oh, that sounds fun. How are you? Mary, August class. Hello, really enjoying it. Love it. Lisa Brown. Hi, currently in class and feel so good. Loving class and learning to use my new Lumen. I've watched your Lumen videos and I'm learning to use it like you do. Love it. Fantastic, my friend. Again, you know, anything that we do or any decision we make to invest in an improvement in our life should be fun. It should be uh, something that we consider a positive addition to our life and not a negative or stressful addition to our life. And that's really like how, how I like to model a lot of the tools that I've incorporated as well. So I'm glad you're feeling that. Karina, I have been doing IF for years. However, in August, in August 1, I started being an intent being intentional about fasting at least 20 hours daily. And wow, anyone reading this, you can do hard things. Your body will thank you 100%. And here's the thing. It's only hard for us because it's new. It's an unknown thing and it goes against the grain, right? Of what people are telling us to do. And then once we do it, it, we question like, why were we struggling or why were we thinking it was going to be so hard? Like it is super fun. And it is one of the easiest things when you do establish, um, Karina, your own authentic life around it, because it's just naturally who you become. And, um, and so I'm so happy for you, my friend, stay with it. Melanie settle the protein dilemma, too much strains, the kidney, and it is treated as sugar regarding metabolism. T good measure for protein, the good measure for protein requirements. This is what I always say, and my protein experts are going to come, so just disregard those comments. you got to figure protein out for you. Not every body responds to macronutrients in the same way. Do you need protein? A hundred percent you need protein. Do you have to stand in the kitchen and muck down chicken breasts and eggs to satisfy a protein requirement out of fear that you're not going to be able to maintain muscle mass. I know that seems a little sketchy to me. It always has felt sketchy to me. And when I've tried to do it, I don't feel good. I actually feel sick. That's not to say though, that there are, there are not people out there who benefit from following protein macro guidelines or macro guidelines in general. I just happen to be one of those women who don't, and there are a lot of women here who don't, right? But you're you're sticking to something despite the fact that you're questioning it in your own mind. Like, I don't feel good. I'm like, and do you want to be a bodybuilder? I don't know. I don't want to be a bodybuilder looking kind of woman. Do I want muscle in my body? Absolutely. I lift weights. If I want bigger muscles, I lift bigger weights and I'm more consistent. Like the protein aspect of it for me personally has never been the defining reason why I've been successful with muscle or unsuccessful with muscle. It's usually the decisions I'm making about how I'm moving my body and what I'm doing with it. So, and other food choices. So you have to take it all into consideration, but if it doesn't feel natural for your body, then you have to go back to the drawing board, get a piece of paper out, track your food for a couple of days or maybe a week, 
Find a nice combination. See what feels good to you. See how you like your body. Boom, you just figured it out for you. And then you don't have to rely on anybody else to tell you what to do anymore. You've made a very conscious decision. You've informed your brain by following things. And then you just make conscious choices about it. I think that's the best way to go with everything. Kelly, hi, my friend. Hi, my friend. Hi, my friend back. I didn't see the comma in there. Uh, July 22 graduate and love it when I can jump on live. Yeah, I love it when you can jump on live too. It's super fun. Uh, Mary Ann, fad, right? We've all been sucked into them. We, I've done all, I've tried carnivore. I've tried the bulletproof thing. I was so sick. I've tried um, plant-based. I've tried paleo. I've tried the Mediterranean. I've done, I, I think I was in a, a period of my life where I only ate rice pudding. Why? I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but it was like a thing I did, right? We do crazy things and, um, and none of them worked the way they were advertised for me. Now, here's what I have to say. I have learned things about every experience I have. So I don't have any regrets about anything that I have done. And I incorporate those learning experiences into everything that I do today. And I follow the Diane Parham meal plan whatever you want to call it, nutritional lifestyle. And that works for me. And so that's what I always recommend women do. Create your own lifestyle. Maybe you could put it in a book and sell it. Who knows, right? Um, Wendy. Hi, Diane. I'm loving class so far. And the info is great. My knee pain from knee replacement is 90% gone since switching to 24 last month. Bye bye Tylenol, right? Like, so Tylenol was masking something that you're that you were doing in your life that was causing the pain so the pain was going away but it wasn't um the signals of pain were going away but the problem of pain wasn't going away so the 20 hour fast helps your body heal itself probably reduction in inflammation and now the pain is gone so now you solved the pain problem and you don't have to use tylenol to cover it up that is beautiful, my friend. Congratulations. And now you don't have that Tylenol going in your gut wreaking havoc there. So I'm so proud of you. And now you can walk freely with your knee replacement. I'm happy for you. Alexis, fad, for sure. We're all, we've are all we all been stuck in a fad. Valerie, uh, dad been there and done it, not sustainable. I think it was fad, been there, done it, not sustainable. Exactly, my friend. Yep, we've all been in the fad diet thing. In the past, ruined my body 100%. I'm glad you figured that out. Melanie, fad, for sure. Doretta, fad, for too many years. Mm -hmm. Because we get caught up. We're like, ooh, if we do this thing, we only have to to do it for a short period of time, although it's restrictive and it doesn't feel right. I'm going to get these results that I see everybody else is getting. And then here's the truth about results that are advertised from emotional marketing. You don't know what those people did to get those results. You don't know if that's their God given body. You don't know what changes have been made. And, and it's everybody's personal business if they've made changes or they're doing things that are drastically, but we get duped. So don't get duped. Look at what you're going to invest in and look what you're willing to do based off your eyes and what you see for yourself, not what someone else is showing you. There's a big difference there. I learned that prepping for um, uh, infomercial too. And some of the things people were doing was crazy. And then I was also in a bodybuilding competition when I was in my 20s and I fell out like so sick. It was such a dangerous uh uh, nutritional plan and workout regimen. And I had to keep up with my life. And I was, I got so just completely exhausted, sick. So we have to know that about things. Fad, 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 ha happy. Uh, so happy. I found you, Shannon. So happy you found us too. Valerie, fad, been there, done it. I, um, usually probably six different well-known things, never sustainable. Exactly. Right. Because, and it's, it's not sustainable. They're not sustainable because they don't work. They're, they're not sustainable because they're not realistic. There are a lot of people who are very, very happy with following a paleo diet and they are loving their life, but that's their lifestyle. There are so many people who are following a carnivore type of lifestyle and it's a lifestyle and they love it. There's a lot of people who are plant-based and it's their lifestyle and they love it. So the importance is establishing your lifestyle and not jumping in for the quick fix. And that's where the, the dim differentiator is. Susie, hi, Diane. I have been, I've done every fad diet. I'm currently in your mindset class and I am on my, tw on my 22nd day of IF. I'm finding I am stunned. I'm able to do it in general, 20 hours of fasting, four hours of feasting, but also did a 26 hour fast. Yeah. Right. And, and like, we have to sometimes just trust ourselves. 
and you're stunned you were able to do it, but now you have proof that you can do it. And that's the beautiful, empowering feeling that so many of us are getting when we're like, there's no possible way I can go 20 hours without food. Well, that's just because you you haven't trained your body yet and you haven't trained your mind to believe it yet and you haven't provided the proof. So just give it a go and provide the proof. And now you can do whatever you want, Susie whatever you want. You can prove to yourself that if you can execute something, then you can do whatever it is you say you want. Julie at FAD. Exactly. Karen, August 22 class, learning a new way of life. Yes. I love those words. Susan, FADs don't work. Diets didn't work. FAD diets didn't work. (laughs) Exactly, my friend. Uh, Renee, hey, hey, girlfriend. Uh, Julianne, 2018 IF grad. My OGs are coming in today and in the mindset course now. I went back and repeated the entire IF course this past week. It totally motivated me and I'm back with a plan. Five days in on 24 and down five pounds and feeling great. Yeah, and and that's the beauty too of this lifestyle is once you do it, your body has amazing muscle memory and if you ended up like kind of veering away for a little while, you just decide you come back. Here's what I also like you guys to think about from the mindset aspect of things also is If you tried intermittent fasting and you got really amazing results and you're like, this is my lifestyle, and then something happened and you ended up steering away a little bit, what I want you to think about is telling yourself, I'm not starting over. I'm just going to pick up where I left off. That mindset shift alone is so freeing for us, right? You're not starting over. You're just going to pick up where you left off. Took a little vacation. Now you're just going to pick right back up where you left off and you just, your body will just pay you back in kind and it has amazing muscle memory. So Julianne, I'm so happy you're back, my friend. Susie, I'm feeling an unbelievable sense of freedom with IF and a new sense of control over my body, which brings me comfort. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my friend, for trusting me with you. I appreciate you. Yes. And that is what intermittent fasting, the the underlying message of intermittent fasting is exactly what you just explained, but a lot of people don't like to click on those kind of titles, right? So we have to talk about weight loss and inflammation and health benefits and all those kind of things. But for me personally, if you walk away from having spent time here with us in this community, or maybe you're as a, as a graduate of the course and you feel like you have freedom and you have a sense of control over your body and you're feeling empowered and you feel like you can take on the world, then girlfriend, I've done my job. I have done my job. So I'm so glad that you're catching all that as well. Marianne, if you have to break fast before you want to, such as taking a long plane ride, is the best time to take a high protein snack, thus allowing ketosis to be maintained? Um, Why do you have to break your fast before a long plane ride? Is the question I would have you ask yourself. Why are you having to break your fast before a long plane ride? Answer that question for sure. And protein is the thing that will take you out of, keto- out of not ketosis, but it takes you out of like a truly fasted state. So you're going to stop autophagy. So I wouldn't do a high protein personally. Um, I would grab a cup of coffee and a bottle of water and I would definitely fast on my long play, right? hundred percent. Ginger, I made it to the live in the current class. Ginger, so good to have you with us, my friend. Christy, July 22 grad. This is absolutely not a fad. Diane's course taught me so much, but what I re- but what I repeat every day in my fasting window is, is the choice in line with what I say I want for myself? Here's what I say I want. Here's what I'm about to decide. Am I going to create conflict or create something that's going to work and end the conflict, right? And so Christy, I'm glad you're figuring that out and you're asking yourself that question. That's that pause moment we take. Anita embraced the IF lifestyle about six years ago, then started playing fast and loose following the faddish tricks and tips that populated my feed and inbox. Yes, we've all been there. In your August class in Fasting Clean for the first time ever, this is radically awesome. I'm I'm in the healing crisis period with nausea and headaches, but accepting them as part of my body healing and cleansing, no more or less. Yeah. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do, my friend, Anita. Take the word crisis out of there. Put in the word opportunity. You're in the healing opportunity period with nausea and headaches sounds so much better. Your body's going to respond to that so much better. Crisis means something bad is about to happen and opportunity means good things are about to happen. They're on the horizon for you. So switch that word out in your own brain. I would write that sentence down. I'm in the healing opportunity period with nausea and headaches, but accepting them as part of my healing and cleansing, no more or less. That will set your day off straight. 
Shelly, I was able to lose almost 60 pounds doing Weight Watchers nine years ago, but could never maintain it. Once I looked back, I realized I was doing some very crazy and destructive things to my body. Now I take a more whole food approach and I'm glad to be learning about intermittent fasting. Yeah. And here's the deal. We've all done things, right? And and I'm sure that there is part of Weight Watchers that you did that you can pull some tools from without having to be 100% in on their program and, and adapt those to how you want to live today. Anything that was a positive from that and you just get to discard anything that was a negative for you. Um, always try to pull a learning experience out for sure. Christy, I finally got over more plateau by changing my lifestyle. I've lost 11 pounds since completing the course and keeping it off. Awesome. And then remember, we don't talk about plateaus, Christy. This is another one of those mindset sh- things that you can use for your own reactionary, uh, how your body reacts to things. Just say you your body took a pause. So my body took a pause. I lost weight. My body took a pause to go spend some energy on some other things. When the pause is over, the weight loss happened again. Plateaus are a word that the diet industry uses. So pause is a much happier word for your body. Concetta, love your top today. Oh, my friend, it's not a top. This is a dress. I don't know if you guys can see the whole thing, but it's a dress. It's one of my favorites. Um, It's one of my favorite summer dresses, but I do have a top like this too. It was in today's uh, thumbnail. Uh, Is this my whole life only to gain the weight back? Uh, I... Oh, I, this, my whole life, only to gain the weight back. Shauna, I'm sorry, I read that wrong. Yeah, right? Like we lose drastically and we do things unauthentically and then we end up going back to where we were because we didn't do this work. Um, You know, when all we're doing is changing what we're told to eat and we're not doing any changes in in the whys and the hows and and, um, how we're going to show up for ourselves and, and how we feel emotionally, that's super important to all of us. Then again, we check out. We follow the rules. And then when something in life hits us, then we go back to the way we were before. So we have to do the mindset work sure, for sure. Janice, that is a beautiful name, my friend. Hi, all. I'm new here. My name is Janice. I found you on YouTube this Tuesday when looking to elevate my 16-hour fast. I just started fasting January 3rd, 2022. This is my second day of the 20-hour fast. Thank you so much. I'm trying to move my mindset from 16 to 20. I feel not hungry this morning. Well, fantastic. Fantastic. That means you're doing some things that are correct. And that 16 hours probably is going to help is going to help you definitely move into the 20 hour a lot easier. So I'm super happy that you're here with us in our community. Kelly, so grateful for your content. Loving August class, been IF 24 and feeling amazing, fitting clothes better, less pain in my feet and get so much more done and look and feel so good. Kelly, those are all the things we want as women, right? And you are hitting every single one of them. Make sure you embrace all of that. Don't take it for granted. Um, sit in joy in all those things. You are doing great things for yourself. And I'm sure it's probably oozing out of you as well. And people are noticing how great you're you're showing up. Christy, multiple benefits, but most surprising and appreciated is good sleep without 30 milligrams of melatonin in the addition to a sleeping pill every night, right? We're supposed to be able to sleep on our own. We're supposed to be able to rise on our own. Um, You know, all those kind of things, we get caught up again in what society tells us, you know, about the, you didn't kill anybody last night or today. So have yourself a glass of wine. Uh, Don't talk to me until I had my coffee. Like we fall into all of those traps and we really should be able to do all that on our own accord. So Christy, getting some sleep, getting some good sleep uh, when you're in this season of life is a true gift. And I'm glad that you're able to do that on your body's own accord. Tanya, Diane, you are so incredibly practical in your approach to all this. I'm celebrating my 35th anniversary in Aruba with my husband and practicing and participating in the August 22 class, New Way of Living. Okay. So all those people who, um, feel like they can't get into class because life is busy for them. My girl Tanya is on her 35th anniversary uh, vacation in Aruba with her husband, and she's still participating in class because you, you, this is a life. This is how we want to execute our life. And I always say, uh, Tanya, I'm going to give you, you know, big shout outs to you for doing this while you're on a vacation, because that proves to you, you can do it anytime. If you can do this on vacation, you can do it at home. You can do it on a work trip. You can do it when life gets crazy. You can do it because you're deciding to do it. So my friend, enjoy the heck out of your time in Aruba. Athena, I am enjoying vacay, but I noticed today while walking up water slide towers that I should have feasted better yesterday. I feel like what I ate 
I'm going to feast better today and do better tomorrow. Yeah. And that's what you do. Wow. Maybe I should have done something different yesterday. So you look at what you did yesterday and you do something better today. So tomorrow is better. Feast for the fast feast for tomorrow. And you'll figure that out and it'll be a great lesson for you. And good for you for walking up water slide towers, my friend. I bet you're having a blast. Anita, join her next class. If you haven't made that leap, you'll learn so much in even the first week. Yeah, first week is this is the foundational week, and then we just build from there for sure. So glad you're loving it. Jackie, rinse and repeat, love it. Yeah, it's the only way we do things around here. Nicole, wow, Christy, and Midori, that's awesome. That was a lot of melatonin. Yeah, and she doesn't have to have it anymore. And everybody's saying happy birthday to our friend. Love it. Anita, I love that you send us back to ask the questions for our own bodies for so many. It's the first time we've been given the permission to trust ourselves and listen to our bodies. Yes, and I'm you. I am you. That's why I share this information. I had to go through this whole process myself, right? And so um, here's what I love about when we do something that should be as simple as choosing our food or making decisions on our own behalf of on how it is we want to look and feel. When we get that practice down, then we also can make ourselves that kind of person in any other environment we're in and we can have permission to trust ourselves and stand up for ourselves and not let people walk all over us and tell us that we're not worthy of things and we can fight for the promotion and we can ask for money and we can ask for all the things that we're deserving of because we prove to ourselves we know how to do that. So that, my friend, is what I want you to take away from that comment for sure. It translates into every aspect of your life. Susan, August 22 class. So happy my sister is watching you live for the first time. Yes. Welcome, sister of Susan. We love having you here with us. Love when you guys share this information with your friends and family. Tove, Anita, uh, in the August class, it is so satisfying to finally have found the way I want to live my life. I couldn't have done it without this course. Thank you, Diane. You're welcome, my friend. I'm so happy that you are looking at this as your lifestyle. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. You come back to the class. You come back to these lives. We're not going to go anywhere. We're going to keep you here with us, my friend. Um, so we are not dropping you off just because you become a graduate. You come back here and you stay motivated and stay in this community. We love having you here. Joanne, this really works. Give give it a minute and you will feel better. Yeah, exactly. Kelly, I thought I would be wanting to chew my arm off at 20 hours fasting, but it's the opposite. Amazing, right? That's all that fear um, and the tricks that our own brain plays on us that limits us from living our best life. So do the mindset work, trust yourself, try something, and then decide. Oftentimes we decide before we try. We had a video on that a few weeks ago, I think it was, where we talked about how we need proof, right? And, and we realize we can provide our own proof. So keep providing that proof for yourself, my friend, and keep those arms where they are. Ruby, uh, talking to Melissa. Uh, Janice, okay, awesome. Tina, the 20 hour fast is the sweet spot. I've been doing it for two weeks now and I see changes in my body. I got energy. I feel leaner. So glad I found you on YouTube. Thank you. What she teaches works. Thank you, Tina. And you have to actually, here's the other thing that I always like to make sure we know and catch ourselves doing this. We can spend hours receiving advice and hearing people's results and then we skip to the next video and we hear advice and we see people's results and then we never implement. Make sure you are actually implementing. Don't just keep soaking up information and not putting it into action. Just pick a thing, give it a try, evaluate it, decide if it's working, if it's not working, if it's working, stick with it. If it's not, go find something else, right? And so make sure you're implementing as well. Fad for sure, Angie. Nancy, I have been IF with keto for we for a few years with little success. Found you on YouTube recently, started clean fasting, and I'm seeing changes in my body on day 70 of clean fast. Awesome. So that means she's intermittent fasting for 70 days clean. Don't think she's fasting for 70 days straight. Um, Nancy, I'm super happy for you. Yeah, because we trust. So that's that other thing. We're like, why am I doing this thing and I'm not getting results? If you're doing something and you're not getting results, you have to ask yourself why. That's staying conscious, right? Stay conscious, stay inquisitive, be willing to tweak some things, be willing to take one for the team. Taking one for the team is when I try something and I'm willing 
to manage my mind around the possibility of failure. So if I try something and it doesn't work, I call that taking one for the team. And then I just get to decide I don't want to do that anymore. And I get to try something else or go back to what was working for me. So you have to manage your mindset around the, some, uh, the possibility of something not working also. Gay, help... Um, help doing great fasting 20 hours. Doc said today to stop as I have high cholesterol. 20 hours of doing nothing does not cause high cholesterol. And high cholesterol is just a phrase that gets tagged onto something that's attached to a number that might not mean anything to you. Ask your doctor why. Get Make sure you do some research on where your high cholesterol is coming from. What are your triglycerides? Go get a calcium heart score test. Not fasting is not going to help your cholesterol. Cholesterol happens from a food and a body chemistry ability or inability to break down cholesterol. That's what cholesterol is. And cholesterol parameters, versus meaning what's high and what's not high, have changed. So girlfriend, be your own advocate in that situation. Go do some more work and figure out why your doctor would say that to you. Or I would, what I would do, in your opinion, is probably go get another doctor and get a second opinion. Julianne, totally the best lifestyle for me. Awesome. Nancy, tw July 22 grad, embracing this fabulous lifestyle. Love it. Tanya, enjoyed a pool swim and brisk walk on the beach this morning. Then black coffee and water while my husband had an omelet and toast. Feast now. Greens, pear, avocado, pistachios, and yogurt dressing. Sounds like a beautiful morning, my friend. Sounds like a beautiful morning. Susan, in the August class now, something told me in my heart and mind that this lifestyle is not a fad and will work out for me. That's a gut instinct, Susan. And I always say lean into those and trust those for sure. And I'm glad that it's working for you. Katie, the fact that this is so easy, freeing and free is the long-term answer for me. Exactly. Lorna, day four of class and already have changed my relationship with food and I'm much more tuned into my body's needs as opposed to my mind's wants. Get ready, my friend. We're going to have a lesson on that. I think it's next week uh, and it's going to blow your mind. Too many insights to list here. Lost 18 pounds in six weeks. Fantastic, my friend. So she started practicing intermittent fasting, full disclosure, before she jumped into class. That's where she lost her 18 pounds in six weeks, but now she's in class to really cement what it is she's doing. Dorita, so thrilled to listen to you live. So thrilled to have you here. Uh, Nicole, in class now, so glad to be here. And I'm loving getting to know the other ladies. It helps to not feel alone. It does help to not feel alone. Not only does it help to not feel alone, but it helps to, to see that you're not the only woman, right? Like for a long time, when I first was going through this process for myself, um, and I was pre-diabetic. I thought, what did I do wrong? How, why is my body failing me? I went through all the things so many women go through. And then I realized, oh my God, after talking to my friends, I'm like, oh my gosh, everyone's in this season. So it's not me. It's just the season that we're transitioning through. And so it does help a lot. Juliet, August course participants and loving the work and information, seeing results. My sister is joining in with me and enjoying the information and the results. So happy for you and your sister. So happy. Renee, it's a way of life and so rewarding when you follow it. And I learned so much here. 2008, 2018 grad. So that's our second 2018 grad, which again, just reinforces that this is a lifestyle because it's 2022. So that's four years. That's pretty solid of following something that's working for someone. That's a lifestyle and not a fad for sure. So thanks for sharing my friend. Kathy, I'm in the August class. It's going great and loving the lessons and community. And I have truly life-changing, lost 18 kilograms in six months, and I'm, I'm now in maintenance, 16.8 IF, IF is now my lifestyle. Yeah, so perfect. There's another perfect example of doing it her way. So she's where she wants to be. So she's maintaining what she achieved with a 16-hour fast, right, and just incorporating that into her lifestyle. I love it. And Lee, um, hi from Nam Nambia, I think it is, learning a lot from you. Welcome, my friend. Leonie uh, from South Africa in your August class learned so much and it's grateful. Thank you for being here with us from South Africa, my friend. This is a truly an international community of women, which again proves that all women are affected. What happened to us is really a true question that we should be asking because it's not just regional, right? It's all over the world and it's all women going through the season. So girlfriend, I, have, I love having you in class. Virginia, I'm in the August class. This is awesome. I started 24 on August 1st. So empowering the information is life-changing. I love that, girlfriend. Gwen, August class, I'm loving it. Can't believe it's so easy, right? Once you learn, once you, once you learn the step-by-step -step approach, it really is easy. Um, 
and that's what I love about the way the classes is, is uh, formatted where you get one little piece of information, information every day and it builds on the previous days. Super easy to incorporate. Jenna Beth, intuitive fasting. If hungry, eat. Open your window and listen to your body. If not hungry, don't eat. I did IF back in 2012 and it screwed me up and messed up my hunger and fullness signals, perhaps because it wasn't a clean fast. Love the lives and I wish everyone success and health. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe in intuitive fasting the way I think a lot of people define it. If you're hungry, eat. If that was the case, we'd all still be doing what we were doing, right? Um, and so I think training your hunger hormones to practice an intermittent fasting lifestyle so they're not running this show is the better approach. Again, just my opinion. Anita, when I first got my Lumen, I tried so hard to reach the protein macro and felt stuffed all the time. Being plant based made it a chore. Then I stumbled upon one of your videos in just the right time and space. Now I know how to use my lumen as the tool it is and adjust my protein to what my body is asking me. Anita, girlfriend, I want to give you a big old hug. Congratulations on doing the work, noticing it wasn't working for you and adjusting it to make it work for you. So happy for you. Um, okay. So let's see. Georgine. August 22 class, I've lost weight in the past, but it keeps finding me looking for a lifestyle where I can be healthy and happy long-term. I appreciate you and all your information. The consistency over time part and the rinse and repeat are going to be the two best things for you, girlfriend, to make sure you're maintaining what you're getting out of class for sure. Julianne, I used a little Johnny rule yesterday and I said no to a birthday party for a friend. <laughs> I love it. I love it. If you don't know about the little Johnny roll, you can, I think, Google search that on my YouTube channel or we'll talk about it maybe at the end of summer. Super fun. I'm, that makes me laugh. I love it. Ruth, I'm so glad I caught you live in current um, August 22 class. Love it. Jan, in August class, have been 24 for over three weeks and I'm really not hungry at 20 hours, but I'm eating during the window. Would I be crazy to fast until I'm actually hungry? Like, what if it's three days? What if it's three days? Lots of people fast for three days. What you have to do before you make that decision, Jan, is go, what am I going to do, right? What am I going to do if I feel hungry at a weird time? Are you going to feel like something's wrong? Are you going to decide to eat? Is that going to be when you end that fast experiment? Are you feeling like it's going to throw you off schedule? How balanced do you feel your hunger hormones are? So there's a lot of questions to ask. And then you, again, you have to take one for the team, do an experiment. And if it doesn't work out the way you had dreamed up, it would work out. You have to be okay with that and, and give yourself that permission beforehand so that you have that, all those things settled out before you give it a try and then play with it. Nicole, the clean fasting is making a difference for me. I've used to have, I'm used to having a small feasting window, but my fasting window was full of free calories, stevia, ACV. I feel so much calmer, clean fasting. Yes. And it's so easy. You're not chasing all these elixirs and things that you have to like put in your body when your body really can just do it all on its own. Uh, Nicole, um, Netherlands, I'm guess she's saying hello from the Netherlands. Cause I don't, whatever she typed in there. I can't read. Um, intermittent fasting works for me. Awesome. Erica, I need the book you recommend in one of your videos, a magnesium miracle. It's an excellent book and might be good read for people with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, et cetera. Yeah. Oh, I read the book. Yeah. 100% the mindset or the magnesium miracle is an amazing book. Just Google the magnesium miracle. It will change so many thoughts that you have in your head about supplementing with magnesium and some of the things we have going on in our world around us and what happened to you. Um, it's a great book. So Erica, thank you for uh, sharing that today. Janice, I need to lower my protein intake. I'm down 30 pounds since January doing keto too. I'm a total carb counter, not net. Um, well, it's okay to count total carbs. You get to decide, my friend. Decide what what you want to do. And if you if you need to lower your protein intake, ask yourself intake. Ask yourself why. Are you feeling full? Do you feel like you're getting too much food? Are you not enjoying your meal preps? Are you not enjoying the food that you have available to you? Like. Decide why it is you feel like you need to, and then experiment from that place. And then you can do a total carb counter 100%. You don't have to do net carbs. You do what you need to do. Anita, once we find out individual eating groove, that works beautifully 100%. Leona, hi, Diane. 20 hour fast, four hour feast. I have works for me. I'm losing weight and have a lot of energy, whereas before I was really tired a lot. I plan to take your class in the fall. Yeah, girlfriend, we're every month we're doing it. I think we're going to not do it in December, not 100%, but I'm going to try to take December off. So we might not run a class in December. So you'll have September, October, November to get in for sure. 
Uh, Conceda, I'm in the August class and really like it. Appreciate all your support from all the other ladies. Love this discussion on fads. We women definitely don't listen enough to our own bodies and learn from our experiences. We rely on others to tell us the right thing for us to do. This approach is so empowering. Yeah. And it's no fault of our own, right? Like we can't, sometimes when we recognize those things, uh, Conceda, what I really want us to be able to do is go, just let it go, right? Just drop all that and go, okay, we know, well, that didn't work for us, right? And then just try to trust yourself. Just try something and go, wow, that's amazing. My body knew what to do. Fantastic. I'm going to try something else. And I think when we are okay with letting go all of all of those preconditioned things we had and societal norms we were supposed to follow and all that stuff, and we do it with food, again, it's going to translate into other areas of your life, then you really just operate in your own accord. And that is the absolute best. So, so glad you're feeling all of that. Anita, I had a friend who lost weight due to chemo. Someone selling a fad program tried to convince her to let them use her as their before and after marketing hook. That's appalling. That's that's appalling. I hope I hope she turned them in. That's just the worst. Uh, Jess, Lynn, any thoughts on how it affects hormones? How what affects hormones? Is what you have to tell me. Becky, thank you for pointing out that not everyone responds to macros the same way. I've always craved fruit and recently did a DNA test to confirm my body likes a higher carb diet. Well, congratulations, my friend. Enjoy the heck out of that fruit. Yeah, perfect. Melinda, I have done every fat diet there is. Not the cabbage soup one, though. Thank goodness. That one was horrible. Uh, the madness ended when I joined your May 22 course and now the mindset course. So yeah, I didn't do the cabbage diet either because thankfully I just am not a cabbage fan. But I'll tell you a quick story. When I was nursing my son, I was working in the corporate world in a dental supply company, and they're very male dominant. We'll just say that. And um, when I went back to work and had to nurse my son, the only place I could nurse him was in the bathroom. And there were a lot of people on the cabbage diet during that time. And it was the most miserable nursing experience for me as a mother. It was horrible, horrible. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, if you guys see these... Um, these spammer people and nasty people coming on. You have my permission to block them. Uh, Brian and Beth. Hello, my friend. Curious cat. Let's see what we got. Uh, so, I'm so happy to catch you live. Absolutely learned a lot from you. Love Christine from South Africa. South Africa, my friend. I love you. I'm coming there one day. I'm coming to South Africa one day. So all my friends from South Africa, get ready. I'm going to be knocking on your door. Terry, diets don't work, but they but work in reverse. Yeah, Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Rowanna, down five pounds since 12 July at 69. I'm thrilled. We'll do your course soon. Come on in, my friend. And 12, uh, or five pounds down since July 12th is a big win. So take every pound of that as a win. Valerie, love how you have new life uh, to the crisis, to opportunity mindset all the way. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Cute. Thank you. So cute. I think you're talking about my dress. Okay. So let's get past all those comments. Let's see. Ella. Um, where'd Ella go? In the August course and having mixed feelings, have experienced some energized sense of calm day yesterday, then sleep and headache issues turn, returned last night. Any thoughts on this, Diane? Yeah, my thought is you need to give your body some space and grace because you're asking a lot of it in four days' time. So you are going to have some of those ups and you're going to have some of those days where your body's going to have to just work really hard. And oftentimes when you come out of like an energized sense of calm day, you probably took advantage of that as you should. And then if your body isn't fully balanced out yet, then the next day it's going to go, Ooh, that was a lot yesterday. I think I'm going to just send you some signs that you're really tired today and I'm hope you're going to listen and you're going to pull it back a little bit for me today. Because the sign I sent you yesterday was you have all this energy and you listen to that and girl, we did a lot, right? So it's okay to take a day where you just relax. Um, I, I did a video one time about why it is we think naps are so bad. Like if you feel tired and you have a life where you can afford to take a nap, take a freaking nap. Like it's not a bad thing. You're not broken. You're not sick. You're not damaged. You're not, you just need a nap Just take a nap, right? So take a day and just do something a little lighter. You're all good. It all balances out. Janine, you're welcome. Or Janice, uh, pop tart three months into fasting, lost weight, but most of all feeling great. Thank you for encouragement. You're welcome. And pop tart. What's up? What flavor is that? Janine, I'm in your August class. This is a lifestyle for me. I've never felt better. Yes. Joining from Australia. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, Maria, I'm in your August class. And what I love most is the no restrictions. Love yourself and be adventurous in the learning and loving process. Thank you, girlfriend. Maria, you're so welcome, my friend. Why would we want to be restricted from anything, especially things that bring us joy? And man, there are just some foods and some uh, um, 
uh, things that we have in our life, whether it be uh, customs and courtesies or traditions we have with our family, that if I had to cut them all out, I would feel so sad and it's not worth it for me. So I'm glad you're figuring that out. Hello from Trinidad. Hello, Laura. I'm in August class feeling the changes already from the from the 20 hour fast. Thank you. You're welcome, my friend. Karen, I'm on day 85 in an extended water fast in another program. I signed up for yours for September because I have found your videos hugely encouraging and enlightening. Congratulations, my friend. So the only thing that I'm going to ask of you is that you consider like when you're in the class that you're going to take in September, do the class in September, take all the information that you're, whatever it is you're doing now, and just let that be on pause for a second, try something new. And then at the end, you have two experiences. You can do this too. Um, so I can't wait to have you. Judy, I've been following you since April last year. Everything I've learned, I've applied and I'm down 90 pounds. It's been a lot of changes and adjustments, how my body works, but well worth all the effort. 90 pounds, Judy. I'm so happy for you. Lulu, life is getting better because I've made a decision. I'm in the August class. Yeah, right? Making a decision sometimes is all we need to do. Just put your foot down and decide you're going to do something. Cindy, I just found your YouTube channel. I tuned 56 and I'm so happy to get your advice from you. Tell me about the classes that everyone's talking about. So I'll put a post, I'll put a comment in the comment section. I run a course called the Intermittent Fasting for Today's Aging Woman. We spend a month together reframing our mindset, figuring out how intermittent fasting can benefit us as a lifestyle undoing a lot of our diet mindset and the conditioning that we have. It's a really great opportunity. Uh, we start our next one on September 3rd. Registration will close on the 2nd. I put the link in the YouTube comments so you can just scroll through and find it. You can go to my uh, website, which is also posted on my YouTube channel. You can send me an email, a bunch of different ways to get in, get on my email, email list. So when we start advertising class, you can jump in with us. Shelly, I'm in the August class and I'm finally doing a clean fast. I used to add stevia and lemon water to everything. All is well now thanks to your class and you don't have to have lemons and you don't have to have stevia. You can just go about your life. Happy for you. Janine, hi, I'm 65 and started intermittent fasting June 5th. I do 22 hours and have lost 13 pounds and lots of body fat. Normally at 22 hours, I'm not hungry. So I'll continue to 24 or 30. Yeah, give it a go. You never know, right? Um, Wanda, a looking amazing girlfriend. Thank you, my friend. Today's Detox Thursday. Remember we talk about, I, sh I shared this with you guys last week. Um, I put the link in, in my description too. It's the Frey Detox Me mask that like what, before I come live on Mondays and Thursdays, I do it. Oh, I love, my skin feels so good. Uh, okay. Uh, Nicole, yes, I think your more rational way of thinking about it is helping me not default to shame. I have a lot of weight to lose. To sh so shame has been part of the thing for so long, not helpful at all. No, my friend, you should not feel shame about having extra weight on or needing to lose weight or wanting to lose weight or having a struggle with weight loss. Shame should never be anything that's ever built into that scenario at all. You should be proud every day of any effort that you are making that's going to lead you to the decisions that you say that you want for yourself, my friend. And then keep coming back here. We will help you any way that we can. Um, okay. Need to decrease my cholesterol and don't like the side effects of statins, muscular pain while fasting lower my cholesterol significantly. I cannot tell you that fasting will lower your cholesterol. What I will tell you is that every body, every body, human body processes cholesterol in different ways. Genetically, I have high cholesterol. I have gotten a calcium heart score scan, which I, I, tell every woman they should go get. It will tell you where cholesterol is being deposited on, if it's being deposited on your heart. My cholesterol was on my body. My heart scan was a zero, despite the fact that my cholesterol is high. I have very low triglycerides and everything else is perfect for me. I genetically have high cholesterol. My body just can't process cholesterol the same way people with low cholesterol can. My husband has low cholesterol and has high calcium heart deposits. So go get more testing. Will, will intermittent fasting lower cholesterol? I can't say that. Um, but it definitely is a healthy way to live. Keep thoughts on working out in the middle of a fast. I say, try it out and see how it feels. Jane, in August class, so motivated. This is easy and long-term for me. So many, many years of carrying the same 20 to 30 pounds, excited to finally get healthy and slim down. Yeah, 100%. And just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Keisha, enjoying the lives. You're welcome, my friend. Okay, that's the link to, 
to come to class. It's for today's aging woman.com. Find out more. You can also just type in for today's aging woman.com. It will take you to the website. Just click around until you find what you want or send me an email. Judy, I can't stress enough how great it is to take the class. It sets you off on the best start ever. Yes, because I do ask you in class to put a lot of things on the shelf and just run with you, your thoughts, your decisions, and how your body's gonna answer you. That is the cleanest, simplest way to live your life. And we don't let um, other things come in that are gonna distract us. When is the next class? The next class is September the 3rd. Registration closes on September the 2nd. You can go to fortodaysagingwoman.com, find out more. That will get you on my email list. From my email list registration, you will go to a page that tells you about class. From there, you can click and go to the page where it's going to give you the price, how the class is broken down, and how you can actually register and save your spot in class. We are having women register for the September class in droves. So get yourself in class. As soon as you sign up, you will get a copy of the intermittent fasting journal and guide and a copy of my intermittent feasting guide that you can immediately download and start incorporating before you get into class. And that's where a lot of women are getting a lot of their head starts is um, they're getting the downloads and they're starting to incorporate and they're coming here and doing the lives with us and they're learning stuff. And then when they get into class, they're super calm. They're coming with an open mind. They're ready to make the changes. It's a beautiful, beautiful process to get into class. Don, been enjoying the August class. Fantastic. Okay, it's been an hour. I got to run. Have an amazing day. Fast long. Feast well. Don't get caught up in emotional marketing, right? Make sure you're making conscious decisions. If it seems too good to be true, it's probably good, too good to be true. You have to do some work. You have to do the thought work. You have to make conscious decisions. You have to make sure that what you say you really want for yourself is exactly, exactly the decision process you're making to get there or you're going to live in conflict. We want to live in harmony. I love you guys. I will see you here on Monday at noon Central Standard Time tomorrow. If you're my Lumen people, or you're doing blood glucose and ketone testing, or you're getting caught up in all the metabolic flexibility discussions, you can join me on my Instagram page. The link uh, is on my uh, YouTube channel. You can go there to just click over to my Instagram page. We'll meet tomorrow at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you want information about the class, email me, ask questions. I will answer them for you. I want you in class with us so you can come into these lives and talk about how amazing your life is becoming because you're deciding to make decisions for yourself based on how you want to look and feel and because you want to do that in your most authentic way. Have a good weekend. I'll see you guys around. Thanks for spending your time with me today.